And in fact, for young kids, particularly those six months and under, the American Academy of Dermatology and the American Academy of Pediatrics generally recommends avoiding chemical sunscreens. Avoiding is a big word, and this is actually inaccurate. A simple Google search to the website of both the American Academy of Dermatology and the American Academy of Pediatrics actually recommend avoiding all sunscreen for kids under six months. And not just chemical sunscreen. And when they mentioned any type of preference, they focused on skin irritation, not safety of UV filters. When it comes to the risk assessment of products, specifically sunscreens for infants aged 6 months to 1 year and toddlers aged 1 to 3 years, the process is evaluated on a case-by-case -case basis for each product formula. As instructed by regulatory bodies like the SCCS in Europe, this approach allows us as a risk assessor to pay extra attention to each product formulated for these vulnerable groups. For infants and toddlers, there are different risk factors compared to adults, and I will go over them quickly so we can understand why recommendation for sunscreen usage for toddlers and infants usually suggests using sunscreen after 6 months or 1 year of age. These guidelines are not based solely on the safety of ingredients, but rather on the unique characteristic of infants and toddlers. Why? Children's skin, particularly infants and toddlers, behaves more like mucous membranes than adult skin. Their barrier is not as tightly woven, so they absorb these things at a much higher concentration. So if you are to apply something on kids, especially young kids six months or under, we recommend minerals to begin with. Another inaccuracy here. These recommendations are unrelated to the skin barrier functionalities in babies. It is misleading to describe their skin as being similar to mucous membrane, as this would pose a significant challenge for survival if their skin were actually behaving like a mucous membrane. So now let's have a deeper dive on what these recommendations are based on. First, we have skin development. When a baby is born at a full term, not prematurely, the skin possesses all the structure of an adult skin. As the baby grows, the skin structure don't undergo dramatic anatomical changes. The skin adapts very quickly to the environment outside of the mother's womb and skin function mature in the first weeks and months. In fact, studies show that infant skin barrier have adults-like properties with full developed stratum corneum. Transepidermal water loss, which measures barrier function, is also found to be equal or even lower than in an adult skin. Second, body surface area to body weight ratio, another factor driving the recommendation is a feature unique to infants and toddlers. Their high body surface area to body weight ratio, which can reach up up to 2.3. Let me give you an analogy to make this easier to understand. Imagine a small sponge weighing 10 grams and another larger sponge weighing around 100 grams. If both sponges are dipped into a glass containing 5 grams of water, each will absorb the water completely. However, the small sponge takes up 50% of its weight while the larger sponge absorbs only 5%. This variation is actually accounted for in risk assessment margin of safety principle. It's part of the interspecies variation. But due to the rabbit changes in ratio during the baby's first year, this accounts for a level of uncertainty that is not tolerated for a product that are formulated to infants and toddlers. The third point is toxikinetics. Toxikinetics is another factor in these recommendations. It describes how the body processes chemicals. In this area, babies are very different from adults. And due to the lack of data on sunscreen filters in populations like infants, avoidance is actually recommended. This avoidance is a highly conservative approach, not because these ingredients are dangerous, as some might suggest. In full-term babies under one year, metabolic function in the skin and liver, the main organ for processing and eliminating chemicals, are still very underdeveloped. To explain this better, let's use another analogy. Matchsticks are not inherently dangerous. It depends on how you handle them. If given to a responsible adult, the risk of fire is very low. 
but if you hand them to a five years old, the risk of fire increases significantly. The same matchsticks are present, but the risk differs based on who handled them. Similarly, UV filters can be safely processed by an adult body, but infants lack the necessary mechanism to handle them safely. These systems become more efficient as the child mature. Point number four is increased risk of allergic reaction. The immune system of newborns and infants under one year of age is significantly different from the adults. This immaturity affects both the quantity and functionality of immune response, especially in the production and activity of T cells, which are essential for immune regulation and allergic tolerance. Early in life, newborns have diminished T cell functionality, including reduced ability to produce key cytokines like interferon gamma and interleukin 4. These cytokines play a crucial role in immune modulation and the prevention of excessive allergic response. The reduced immune response capabilities in infants, coupled with differences in other immune cells, such as natural killer cells and antigene presenting cells, contribute to the higher likelihood of allergic sensitization. Additionally, genetic predispositions and environmental factors such as early allergen exposure may further increase the risk of allergic reactions in infants. Consequently, products applied to infant skins can pose a heightened risk of allergic reaction due to the underdeveloped state of their immune system. After we have looked to the four driving factors for this recommendation, we understand why the recommendation isn't actually about chemical sunscreen, but applies to any sunscreen formulation. Even mineral sunscreen, which contain UV filters like zinc oxide and titanium dioxide, these type of sunscreen, like chemical sunscreen, are a part of a full formulation that include solvents, emulsifiers, preservatives, and more. Avoiding unnecessary exposure during this early stage of baby's life is really important. Sunscreen, whether chemical or mineral, can be avoided or even replaced by using physical barriers like UPF clothes and practicing sun avoidance habits. These options are safer and more effective for infants and toddlers. People talk about how the fact when they apply these sunscreens, they can taste them in their mouth. There's a lot of fear around these and some of that fear is substantiated. Ever notice that when you put sunscreen on a few minutes later, you have that weird chemical taste in your mouth mouth, even if it wasn't an aerosol spray. That baffled enough people that a lot of us have thought, I'm just putting a cream on my face with my hands, so why am I tasting it? Is this being absorbed through my skin into my bloodstream and reaching my taste buds? Well, let's hope not, because thankfully it is highly unlikely. That assumption that sunscreen UV filters get into your skin in a millisecond and somehow sends your taste buds into chaos just doesn't really add up. While it isn't entirely known what exactly explained this phenomena, there are far better theories. Theory number one, I called it the nose nose. The nose is in the center of your face for a reason, allowing easy access for sunscreen to get a little too intimate. Sunscreens contain compounds that can volatilize, that is, evaporate into the air. These airborne molecules can be inhaled and detected by your olfactory system, your sense of smell, which is closely related to your sense of taste. Thus, it creates an illusion of tasting something without ingesting it. Think about how when you have a cold and your nose is blocked, foods taste bland, that's because smell significantly influences taste. Another theory is airborne particle during application. This happens especially with sprays and lighter lotions. Tiny droplets of the formulation can become airborne during application. These small particles can be inhaled or accidentally get into your mouth, it's similar of how you might catch a whiff and a taste of a perfume or a cologne when someone nearby applies it. A simpler theory is accidental ingestion. Trust me when I say it is easily forgotten how frequently an individual touches their face and mouth. You apply sunscreen with your hands and forget to wash them properly, 
proceeding to touch your lips or eat something, hence leaving that awful taste. And back to the original fear-based theory, why skin absorption is not the cause. They form a protective layer using film-forming ingredients that hold everything together. While some compounds can slowly penetrate the skin barrier, this takes hours, not mere minutes. So if you are tasting sunscreen shortly after applying it, it's more likely due to the reasons above rather than rapid absorption into your bloodstream. If this is annoying you too much, here are my tips to avoid the unpleasant taste. First, you can change your application strategy. Be more careful around the nose and the mouth when applying sunscreen. Apply thicker layers of water-resistant sunscreen to avoid volatilization or accidental ingestion in these areas. Use unscented or fragrance-free sunscreens. The fewer added fragrance, the fewer the volatile compounds that could interfere with your sense of taste. Try mineral sunscreens. Mineral sunscreens contain UV filters like zinc oxide or titanium dioxide, which don't need to be dissolved in the formulation. This reduces their likelihood of becoming airborne. Lastly, you can just simply wash your hands after application. This simple step can prevent accidental transfer of sunscreen to your mouth or the food that you eat. On top of that, avoid touching your face or lips after applying sunscreen to minimize contact and reduce the likelihood of that metallic taste. These tips can help you achieve a proper sun protection without the aftertaste. And as always, stay safe.